The inspiration for today's video comes from the recent news that EA has canceled their highly anticipated Star Wars first-person shooter game. We never knew much about the game, but the speculation was that it would be a Mandalorian-themed game. The hype was big, but short-lived as the game's announcement and cancellation were literally weeks apart from one another. This is yet another disappointment coming from Star Wars, and I can't help but ask this. Is Star Wars the most mismanaged franchise ever? I can't believe a franchise as big as Star Wars continues to drop the ball and disappoint fans so many times on so many levels. Those that make the games, movies, and shows, and heck, even the ones that run the hotels struggle to keep this franchise upright. Owning Star Wars should be a cakewalk for Disney, and coming up with new ideas for movies, shows, and games should not be that difficult. There should not be this much anger, frustration, and disappointment with this IP. And yet, here we freaking are. In today's video, I want to talk about this Mandalorian game because there's some interesting stuff behind the scenes with this situation, and I also want to take a look back at some other frustrating examples that I could use to help us answer this question. Is Star Wars the most mismanaged franchise ever? It sure seems like it to me. As the gaming industry continues to be hammered with layoffs, we also received the disappointing news that EA cancelled the Mandalorian FPS title that was in development at Respawn Entertainment. Hype for the game was built up recently as reports were beginning to give out some details on what the game could be about in regards to the game's story and gameplay. The game was going to allow players to step into the role of a Mandalorian bounty hunter during a time when the Empire was in full control of the galaxy. The reports claimed that the iconic Mandalorian jetpack pack would be available for use, and the gameplay would feature high mobility with boost sliding similar to that of Apex Legends, another game from Respawn. The game was set to be fast-paced, with health regenerating upon successive kills. Other Mandalorian gadgets that could have been used in the arsenal include a wrist rocket, grapple hook, and a visor for tagging enemies and bounties. According to Insider Gaming, the game was not open world but made up of linear levels set across multiple planets. Everything about this situation sucks. First off, 670 people lost their jobs at EA, and then, of course, then we have the game that got canceled. So first off, my thoughts go out to all of those at EA that lost their jobs and across the gaming industry because over two years now, I think it's been over 25,000 people that have lost their jobs to layoffs. So really unfortunate stuff going on right now in the gaming industry. And there's one more thing I want to bring up before I rant and rave about Star Wars games, or the lack of them, I should say. Disney actually may have played a role in the cancellation of this game. An EA insider gave some information to Star Wars Theory that makes this situation even more interesting. The insider told Theory that Disney forced EA to make this decision. EA's exclusivity deal with Star Wars ended. This is something we already know. Disney is now increasing their licensing fees to potentially force developers like EA to back out of previous deals and pay penalties. This means that Disney would avoid paying the penalties if they decided to end the deals themselves. Disney has new licensing agreements which are now asking for 33% of profits from companies that have deals with them to use the Star Wars brand. Here's something interesting. Disney has a deal with Epic Games now, and apparently they are excused from this licensing fee. They are the only developer to have a 0% licensing fee due to Disney's partnerships with Unreal. I do believe these reports, but I also think EA had a role in this as well, because they did do some reorganization after announcing the layoffs and cancellation of the game. The company is reportedly planning a shift towards massive communities, live service games, and large open world games. And at least they are still working on completing the Star Wars Jedi series too. Here's the bottom line. This is corporate greed at its finest. It's the root cause of this. There is no legitimate reason why this Mandalorian game should be cancelled other than the fact that companies like EA and Disney want to make a ton of money. EA, for example, wants to make money in the easiest ways ever, which is going through live service gaming, and I don't understand why Disney is going to pressure these companies into draining more of their pockets when we already don't get enough Star Wars games. It's not in the market at all. It should oversaturate the market. But here's what kills me. Wouldn't a first-person Star Wars game make you a lot of money? Wouldn't the profits be good enough for EA to handle Disney and Disney to be happy with what they get too? Why are companies ignoring this brand when it comes to games? 
It's probably because they want you to play the mobile game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes so you can spend money on in-app purchases. And it wasn't that long ago when EA pissed everybody off with their loot box scandal in the modern Star Wars Battlefront games. Loot boxes were originally the best way to unlock characters and other gameplay enhancements. And how did we fall from grace? The original Battlefront games were loved by all because, well, it was just fun to play in the biggest battles from the franchise. You got to play as clone troopers, slay rebel soldiers with Darth Vader, and dogfight in space. And now we have to monetize the shit out of a game that should make a shit ton of money without the loot boxes and live service that we see in games today? It's ridiculous. And have you seen the hype recently for the remaster for the OG Battlefront games? And they're even bringing back online play. You watch, a lot of people are going to play that. They're going to make a lot of money. It's going to gain a lot of traction. You're going to see a lot of YouTube videos. It's going to be on TikTok. This is a great move because of a game that was built off of having fun. Nobody wants to play a Star Wars game and grind for hours just to unlock Darth freaking Vader. We hardly get single player Star Wars games too, and that's why this Mandalorian game would have been awesome. And this actually wasn't the first Mandalorian game to get cancelled. Remember Star Wars 1313? A little over 10 years ago, a third person game featuring Boba Fett was axed. And we still have no idea if we're truly going to get the Kotar remake, and I'm still wondering why don't we get an open world Star Wars game similar to say like Skyrim? How about a game where we create our own character and we could customize the looks and the abilities and you could choose to be, I want to go out into the galaxy and be a Jedi or a Sith or a bounty hunter or a space pirate, etc, etc. Allow us to build and customize ships like in Starfield and go around the galaxy. Oh, and speaking of Bethesda, they're making an Indiana Jones game, another property of Lucasfilm, and Disney is allowing Marvel games to be made by EA. So how the hell is Star Wars getting the short end of the stick here? There's so many different kinds of games that could be based off of Star Wars. Star Wars games should be flooding the market. And I know Ubisoft is in the middle of making Outlaw, and that looks interesting. I think I'm going to check it out. But again, like, where are these other Star Wars games at? Why isn't this oversaturating the market? I, I just, I don't get it. And of course, I care more about quality over quantity, but I'm truly surprised that we don't see more games out there since this franchise is so popular. And there's also Star Wars projects in the realm of movies and shows that we never got. We were supposed to get Rogue Squadron, which was going to be directed by Patty Jenkins, a movie focused on Starfighter pilots. In my opinion, would have been great. A Star Wars version of Top Gun? Who honestly would have said no to that? The writers of Game of Thrones were once set to make a trilogy of films that would have premiered in 2022, 2024, and 2026. That got nixed, unfortunately, shortly after the final season of Game of Thrones, and I know that last season was controversial, but these guys had creative minds that would have been a great addition to the Star Wars writing room, and here we are sitting in 2024, still waiting for the first Star Wars movie since 2019. Other great creative minds like Kevin Feige and Zack Snyder were also supposedly in the running for making Star Wars films. And I know nowadays people will say no to Feige due to the current state of Marvel, and Zack Snyder's recent Rebel Moon fell short of being something great. But, again, I truly think these talented minds would have been a great addition to some sort of project in this franchise. It kind of pains me to say this one, but I'll say it anyway. Even with Ryan Johnson, his trilogy would have maybe been interesting to see. I was not a fan of Episode Eight, and planning on giving him a trilogy well before seeing the reception of The Last Jedi was pretty dumb on Disney's part. But Ryan is a talented director and perhaps working on something else in Star Wars, but outside of the Skywalker saga, maybe that would have been the best way to go. And actually, this is now the perfect time to segue into the last thing I want to talk about, and that is the mismanagement of the content that we actually have gotten. I recently went back to an old podcast that I used to do with some friends. It's called Ramble Radio. By the way, it's on all podcasting platforms. Just a little plug out there if you want to go check out what we have. But anyways, I went back to listen to two specific episodes. It was our reviews of The Kenobi Show and The Book of Boba, and it's pretty amazing to see how badly they messed up those shows that should have been good that literally had the potential to be great shows that could have given disney great ratings more merchandise opportunities more traction on the internet other sources of revenue how do you write shows around pre-existing characters that are loved by all and drop the ball like that boba fett doesn't even act like himself in his show and he's not even the focus and speaking of focus in the Kenobi show, at one minute the focus is on Obi-Wan and Darth Vader, and then the next minute it's all about Reva. 
To this day, I sit here in disbelief that those two shows are not loved. I know fans can be brutal, but you can't deny that the writing was controversial in some parts of both of those shows. Those shows should have been a cakewalk. Same with the sequel trilogy. People flocked to theaters to see a brand new Star Wars trilogy, the first one since the early 2000s, and the first time we would see the original trilogy characters, the actual actors like Mark Hamill, come back for the first time since the 80s. And what did they get in this sequel trilogy? That episode 8 Luke Skywalker? Ugh. The most frustrating thing about the sequel trilogy is that it kind of ruins the originals, especially the ending. Anakin is the chosen one, and he completed his destiny by turning good again, saving his son Luke and defeating the Emperor. The importance of Luke, Vader slash Anakin, and Palpatine is tarnished because the sequels decide to bring back Palpatine in the most half ass way possible. It not only damages the original trilogy, but it honestly damages the entire franchise. I don't want to go into a deep dive about these movies though and these shows and why they're controversial because I've done it before and, and I'm tired of it. I am sick and tired of that and I'm also sick and tired of being a frustrated Star Wars fan that wants content. More content and good content. And there are things I like, don't get me wrong, I'm still a fan, I plan on watching everything that comes out, I plan on checking out future games, I just continue to sit here in disbelief as I see games get cancelled, talented directors get overlooked on projects, and the fumbling of the bag when it comes to writing stories that include pre-existing characters and lore. And also, let me just quickly say about that hotel that closed, and it closed in what, like, it being open for a year? Why? It was way too expensive, limited capacity, a lot of the themes were based off of the sequel trilogy, they had disgusting looking food on, that they served you on lunch trays at like a school cafeteria or at a prison cafeteria, you know, go look up the pictures of the blue shrimp and tell me you're gonna spend thousands of dollars to, to live there for a couple of days. And just overall, I think it's missing a lot of Star Wars vibes and elements to it. It's just, it looked like a generic space hotel spaceship. So, I, you know, I made videos on all this stuff. I get tired of talking about it, but I just got, you know, really triggered with the fact that another cool idea for a game gets canceled. It's also crazy to see how Disney just absolutely refuses to tap into all of the lore that is found in comics and novels. We need more content on villains, Darth Plagueis, Darth Revan, Darth Nihilus, and Darth Malgus, just to name some. Those would be great choices to have on the big screen or get a TV show. Give me more seasons of Tales of the Jedi and, and things like that. Make another version called Tales of the Sith. We got a Clone Commando game years ago. How about a Clone Commando show? How about we actually make TV shows that will actually last as long as regular TV shows? Commit to making more shows like The Mandalorian and plan on running it for four or five seasons. Disney has learned their lesson from rushing out so much content during the early days of Disney+. Plus. However, this brand has been damaged so much that's going to take years to repair it. It really will. It's truly unbelievable how Disney, Lucasfilm, writers, directors, and game developers can't figure out how to make great Star Wars content when it's right in front of their eyes. And especially ideas and lore and stuff that they could tap into f to help them create new stories and new projects. And I also to this day can't figure out why some of these people have zero desire or care to honor pre-existing characters and lore. I honestly wish more of these people that have the decisions to create things and actually make these things would be more like fans. People that are passionate about the stories, the characters, and all the other elements of the franchise. So, as I wrap up this video, I want to ask the question to you now. Is Star Wars the most mismanaged franchise ever? Give me your answer in the comments. Thanks for watching the video. Check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. My content's also on podcasting platforms. Just Google Analyze This Podcast. You can also find me on X and TikTok, X at Analyze This underscore YT, and TikTok at Analyze This 54 underscore YT. Thanks again and take care.